Tonight's message. And you know, you know me. You can't see the wind. I mean, have you ever seen the wind? Really see the wind. You can see it move the trees or blow trash. Or you can feel the wind, but you can't see it. Now, if it comes to water, I can see the water. I can feel the water. I can see what the water does, but I can't do anything with the wind. But I still believe that it exists because I see the result of what it does. Now, how about salvation? Can you see salvation? Can't see it. But you know what it is. And you can sure enough see what it does. Let's look at the book of John. At the third chapter. And verses 1 to 20. Now this is talking about a, a fellow named Nicodemus. Now Nicodemus, in case you think this sounds Greek, Nicodemus is a Greek name, but he's Jewish. He's a big leader, very important religious leader. Starting in the first verse, there's a man named there was, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who's come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs that you're doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I'll tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Now how can a man be born again when he's old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered. I'll tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows whenever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked? You're Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify of what we've seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken of you earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And look back at that verse that says, for God so loved the world. He didn't say anything about any one particular person, any group of people. He said the world, that's everybody. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whosoever does not believe stands condemned already 
because he's not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will come into the light for fear that the deeds will be exposed. I'm going to go ahead and read the 21st verse. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it can be seen plainly what has been done through God. Now you see how this starts off? Here was a man that could not see salvation. He couldn't see the kingdom of God. Some people call it the kingdom of heaven. But when you call it the kingdom of heaven, it's kind of like taking the focus off of God and putting it on some object. It's the kingdom of God that we're interested in. It's the kingdom of God that we're looking at. But now Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And they were the ruling council. They're the ones that made sure everything went right within the church, or within the Jewish um, fellowship. He was a member of the Sanhedrin or the high council. So he was the holiest of holies. I mean, you couldn't get any higher. It was like um, when we look at the churches and you have various ranks, you know, Sunday school teacher, maybe up to the pastor. This dude was over everybody. And most of the Pharisees didn't like Jesus because he called them hypocrites. That he was forever challenged their authority and their views. Now, here's poor old Nicodemus. In spite of his religious faith, his high religious office, and his spiritual awareness, he still couldn't see salvation. <sighs> and I really think that Nicodemus had a lot of questions to ask. I think there were questions that Nicodemus had come up with in his own mind that he needed answers for. So in the cover of darkness, he came to Jesus for those answers. Why do you think he came at night? Maybe he didn't want somebody to know he was coming to talk to Jesus. And then, of course, we all know that Jesus drew large crowds during the daytime. If Jesus was, uh, let's say he had a thousand people that he was talking to, and Nicodemus come in and tried to ask a question, and Jesus already got a thousand other people asking questions. Maybe it was better to sneak in at night, one on one, and get the right answers. Of course, I guess being a person in his caliber, could you imagine the other Pharisees? What were you doing talking to him? Don't you know that he's putting us down every chance he gets? And you're. What do people say when they see you talking to Jesus? Well, and then, of course, there was a custom of the day, and that was that officials talked to each other at night. So possibly Nicodemus felt as he was a, uh, an official, and Jesus was official. But whatever the reason was that he went at night, he went himself. He had servants, he had assistants that he could have sent. But he had questions that he had to ask. And he knew that Jesus had the answers. He went in person. Excuse me. Now, when he met Jesus, of course, Jesus, or uh, Nicodemus, was doubting the authority of Jesus. Yet, when he came to Jesus, he honored him by calling him rabbi. 
He didn't come in and say, hey, you've got a question. He honored him and called him rabbi. He acknowledges that he's seen through all the miraculous signs that God obviously sent him. But he still doubts that he's the promised Messiah. And Jesus tells him, said, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus was talking about. He couldn't see salvation. He couldn't see the wind. He knew God existed, but he couldn't see salvation. And we have to examine Jesus. And I think we have to do that every day. That we have to examine Jesus. We have to look and see what Jesus is doing because the Bible says that we need to be like Jesus. And if we don't see what Jesus is, how can we be like him? We need to examine him on a regular basis. Learn just a little bit more. But poor old Nicodemus, he got confused. He said, do you mean to tell me more again i got to go back to mom's and mom's got to do this all over again? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, no. That's not the way it works. He said, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven unless you're born of the water and the spirit. And what he's saying is that when he was first born, Mama's water broke. He was born the first time. When you're baptized, and that means, baptized means immersed in water. You're in the water a second time and you're born again. And that's what he was trying to tell Nicodemus. Nicodemus didn't know anything about the kingdom of God. And he told Nicodemus that God so loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's a pretty big gift. pretty big deal when God sends his son so that the rest of us can have eternal life. And you remember, I know I mentioned this maybe, oh, it's been a few weeks back. But remember me mentioning that Adam in the Garden of Eden was immortal? immortal? He was going to live forever. He would have never died had they not sinned. So something that man took by his own choice, God sent his son back to the earth to give man that choice back. He says, I can't make you immortal. But I can give you eternal life. Now, the Pharisees, they were scholars. They knew everything that there was to know about the Old Testament. But you know when how much they knew about the New Testament? I mean, think about it. How much would the Pharisees know if the story of Jesus had been written yet? So they couldn't read the book. They had to do, they had to believe like before Jesus was put on the cross, they had to look to the cross. Okay? They were looking forward. And here we are, because the cross has already happened, we're looking back at the cross. 
It's happened. And we know it's happened. They had to believe on what Jesus was saying, and Jesus was rejected. They wouldn't believe that this person could do what he said he came here to do. And here's the sad part about so many Christians. They're a lot like Nicodemus. We could probably come up with some word that would fit Nicodemus and make some big Nicodemus longing or something like that. That were like because they believe that their works and their knowledge is salvation. They believe, and there's people that don't. They'll get this book and they read it and read it and read it. And they study it and study it and study it. And they can't see salvation. They know what the book says, but they don't see salvation. There are Christians in the churches today that they believe in the works. They believe in their works. They believe that all that they do is going to count up and add up and when it comes Judgment Day, they're going to be rewarded for what they do. Well, let me tell you, if they don't see salvation, they're not going to get to Judgment Day. They're not going to have an opportunity. Because they're going to be sent right on to the hotspot. Thank you. 